It's very easy now with Seamus 3D to build walls like this using voxels with textured on bricks and mortar, but this tutorial shows how to build walls with individual bricks, leaving gaps for the mortar to be added separately so that our bricks and mortar will be three dimensional. This makes it more challenging, but with a little practice, I can enjoy building a wall like this while listening to music and the results are more satisfying. We get logically correct corners, unlike the corners you get from these flat textured cubes, and three dimensional bricks and mortar ray trace better in relation to the position of the light. Plus we'll have greater artistic freedom, not being limited to all our walls being two or more bricks thick. To practice creating a 3D bricks and mortar wall, after opening Seamus 3D, click this button to open the house item bar. Zoom out using the mouse wheel. Select this brick and click on the grid to lay the bricks. I like to have my view angled like this when laying bricks so that I can see nicely how the wall is progressing and I can confidently aim right between the bricks without this happening, which can happen with a bird's eye view. If we lay a brick at the wrong position, we can quickly press the delete key on the keyboard or we can use the dim filter by clicking this button to drag the brick. To hide the dim filter, click the dim filter button again. I try to avoid relying on the undo feature after more than just a few bricks have been added because currently it's not as reliable as I would like it to be. And because when there are too many bricks for Seamless to back up fast enough, Seamless will only back up at 5 minute intervals instead of backing up after each brick is added. If I mentally aim at the target point before my mouse has arrived at that point, I find my aim is more reliable and I can build much faster. To rotate a brick, click this button or press Q. We can change the view orientation by dragging with the right mouse button held down and pan the view by dragging on empty space with the left mouse button and the left control key held down. If there is no empty space, hold down the left control and left alt keys. To shorten these bricks to align them with the other bricks at the ends, first toggle out of item bar mode by clicking this button or by pressing F3. When out of item bar mode, we can see the control points, also known as the control cages, which let us modify the bricks. Often, I like to see only the control points for the items I'm working with. We can hide all the control points by clicking the black hat or by pressing Z and then show only the cages for the bricks we want to modify by clicking them. To be able to click to show the cages, click this button to enable this feature. We can click this button to center our view around the selected points which also lets us zoom in to the selected points more easily. Click this button to quantize the view orientation. While holding down the left shift key, drag out a rectangle to surround the control points for this side of the bricks. We can freely drag the points and let them snap into place like this, or we can use the dim filter. To add the mortar, toggle back into item bar mode by clicking this button or pressing F3 and select this block of cement. Add a block on top for each wall and toggle out of item bar mode and then drag the blocks to fit the walls. If we wish, we can drag this end so it goes through the other block of cement at the corners and leave our corners like this. Our 3D bricks and mortar will still look better than flat surfaces with textured on bricks and mortar, but I like to refine the corners to make a better fit, so I'll leave this snap here for now. The issue may not be obvious at first, but because a centimetre gap is left for the mortar between the bricks, the bricks at the corners are half a centimetre shorter than desired to line up with the bricks from the other side. We could move the bricks a tiny amount to bring them in line like we would in the real world, 
but I prefer to lengthen the bricks by half a centimetre because this doesn't leave a greater gap in the mortar elsewhere. To lengthen or move the bricks half a centimetre, click on this button to open the grid's control panel, tick the YZ plane, tick the show subsquares and set subsquares to 40. This will let us snap half a centimetre because we've divided our 0.2 metre snapping distance by 40. Click the fawn coloured bunny in the grey hat so we only see the control points for this block. Select the edge points, centre the view so we can zoom in very close and drag. Hide all the cages and click the long bricks facing us at the corner. Don't click on any of the short bricks at the corner because they're from the other side which isn't facing us. Select the ends, drag and let them snap half a centimetre out. Now change the view to the other side so that the short bricks that were facing us are now the long bricks facing us. Tick the grid's XY plane. We don't need to change the plane or even see the grid for the control points to snap but this helps show what we're doing. Same as before, hide all the cages, click the long bricks facing us, select their ends and drag. To fit the mortar for this side, hide all the cages, click the mortar, select this end and drag. That completes the corner so that everything fits exactly right, except notice the cursor has been showing magenta ever since we set the grid subsquares to 40. This serves to remind us to set the subsquares back to 2 soon as we can. If we ignore this, it is all too easy to add new bricks misaligned and not realise after a good amount of bricks have been added, which can be annoying. Duplicating bricks can greatly speed up the process of building a wall. To duplicate, first select the bricks Click this button and drag. Be sure that the grid is set up to snap correctly before clicking the duplicate button. When working with small clay bricks, it is much more critical that we fit our mortar exactly or we'll get this happen at the corners. When lengthening clay bricks and fitting the mortar, have the grid subsquares XYZ set to 50, 10, 50. We can hide background items by selecting only the items we want to see and then click the piggy. This feature makes it much easier to work with a quantized view. The hidden items can be shown again by clicking the piggy again.